Hatfield House in Hertfordshire, the Marchioness of Salisbury is particularly interested in tulips, especially old ones, with a history that stretches back almost as far as the house itself. Do you remember the first tulips that you planted here? I think they were the Rembrandt, those striped and feathered ones. Mm. Were from very early days, like the ones one sees in the Dutch pictures. Yes. It's um, such a shame that one can't get hold of the true Rembrandts anymore. It's very sad. It's I'm so afraid it must be some virulent virus, mustn't it? Although it was a virus that caused them to be feathered and broken like that. The Rembrandts borrowed their name from the Dutch painter of the 17th century when Holland was gripped by tulipomania. Striped and feathered tulips, bizarres, were especially prized. A single bulb of a variety called Viceroy, sadly no longer in cultivation, changed hands for two cartloads of wheat, four of rye, eight pigs, 12 fat sheep, a couple of cheeses, silver, some barrels of brandy, and a carriage and pear. They had a fine sense of values then. Very good one, that pink one, isn't it? Isn't it pretty, that? That's rather like some of the old Rembrandts, isn't it? With its broken color. That's one called Artis, the really full flora tulip, I think. It's very sturdy, too. You can leave these viridifloras, tulips with green markings on the flowers, in the ground year after year. We don't lift those at all, and we find they do uh, increase. Not very much, but they increase a little. It's doing something extraordinary, that tulip, isn't it? Isn't it? It's, it's really a typical Rembrandt, that, isn't it, or broken tulip? It's making itself into a Rembrandt. And yet it's, a, it's, it's quite a modern one. I think this is Dreaming Made. And it's, I suppose, got a virus and it's broken just like the old fashioned Dutch tulips did. It's absolutely beautiful. That's I hope that it will increase. At Hatfield, tulips are used informally in a magnificent formal setting. All too often the reverse is true, which in a family of such diverse colour and form seems a wasted opportunity. These are elegant single earlies, less shapely perhaps than these lily-flowered tulips with their finely pointed petals. The first species and single early types may flower in March, while the cottage tulips in mad fringed parrots wait until the second half of May. In April, the Hatfield tulips are joined by these extraordinary crown imperials, Fritillaria imperialis, with pineapple tufts of leaves above the hanging bell-like flowers. They too are flowers with a history, like many of the plants that Lady Salisbury has gathered together. This is quite the dottiest of all the family of tulips, isn't it? Indeed, it's very eccentric. I always think they fit in rather well into a Elizabethan garden or Jacobean garden because the Elizabethans loved anything that was strange, didn't they? Frantic and fantastical. <laughs> it's extremely <laughs> frantic, feathering, yes. fringing. Mm -hmm. It's one of the parrots, is it? Yes, and they do go back, I think, a very long time. I think the first parrot appeared in the 17th century. And it's feathering of green and all the different colours. It's very subtle, isn't it, yes. that colour? It looks yes. so dusted. That's Dorman's record in the East Garden. The Knot Garden in front of the old palace was designed by Lady Salisbury herself and is filled with flowers from the 16th and 17th centuries. There are tulips here too, including a collection given by the Museum of Bulbs in Holland, the Hortus Bulborum. This is one of the most beautiful, I think, in the entire Knot Garden. Isn't it lovely, that? And the way the petals curve outwards, it looks so much uh, like those pictures that you see in the east in Turkey or in Persia on, on tiles yes. and decorations, doesn't it? Yes. It's called Duke Van Tarl Rose. It's one of the surviving. very earliest ones, I think. It's sturdy and um, it does do well, mm. that one. But there's no modern tulip that's got quite that same form and that flick, mm. that little point at the end of the petals. No, I don't know any of them. I suppose it's the nearest to the lily flower, but they're much more exaggerated, aren't yes. they? Wonderfully elegant, narrow little tulips, isn't it? Isn't it pretty, that? The candlestick tulip, or lady tulip, I think they call it too, Clusiana. 
got such a pretty grey blue leaf too. Do you find it? that it ever opens up or does it stay in that yes, very Yes, it does, narrow, but it has to have some really very warm sun. Yes. And then it's got marvellous black anthers. But it's a little reluctant to open unless there's great warmth. It, it, it doesn't really uh, <coughs> multiply very well here. I think it needs a, a tremendous bake every summer. In the exuberant planting of the West Parterre, tulips are brilliantly set off by mounds of foliage borrowed from other plants. Hellebores, euphorbias, iris, dianthus. Particularly useful as well at this year is the young foliage of peonies. It's very good at this moment, isn't it, when you get all the different bronzes and even bronze and green. And it does seem to be a very good um, combination with the, with the different tulip colours. But so much of this planting is really purely accidental. It's very much cottage garden planting. Which is this very dark purple tulip here? Oh, one. That's one called Queen of the Night. I think it's been in for quite a long time there, several years. And you see it's uh, spread about. It's, one of those lovely ones which seems to settle in and increase. It's maddening though that so few of them will do that. So Unlike few daffodils, of them which clump up almost yes, from year one, it's, it's you so tend to lose tulips more than <laughs> very much more so, than yes. see them increase. Some do you find any types are better than others? Yes, I think the cottage tulips or anything with cottage tulip blood seems to be more inclined to, to stay on and increase, and you can leave them in the ground. Because I've found that Magier is also rather good at hanging on. Have yes, it is. Well, long? there again, that lot there, I think, has been in uh, two or three years. They yeah. get smaller, but then that doesn't seem to matter. In a way, they're prettier when they're not so huge. I love your spring green. Isn't spring green mm. a, a beautiful tulip? And don't you think it uh, reminds you very much of the Duke Van Tal, the one we were looking at earlier in the Knot Garden? It's a wonderful leaf, this tulip's got, isn't it? Isn't beautiful? Which one's too strange? It's called Aratorio, and it's a Gregii tulip, I think. And they're very beautiful inside. They've got a dark, a lot of black, a little yellow. Yes. How deep do you plant your tulips when, you, when they're first going in? Well, at least nine inches. Um, an old friend, a great uh, gardener, told me years ago that she, she reckons that the deeper you planted, the less likely you were to get tulip fire. And since then, I, I always plant them pretty deep, at least nine inches. And I think possibly that, that's so. We, we were jolly lucky. We really have escaped it so far. Yes. Wonderful diversity the tulip family have, don't they? Isn't it extraordinary? If you look at those, I mean, yeah. the contrast, they, you hardly think they were the same flower except for their leaves. This has got that same slim form of the lady tulip, hasn't it? It's very graceful. One yes. wonders rarely if they aren't derived from the acuminata, the very early one, and the lady tulip. And the contrast with that, which I suppose is a cottage. Do you think this cottage. is um, West Point, the lily flower? I one? think it is, yes. I think it's West Point. Do you give them any bone meal or any um, special food when you're planting, or do? You... Well, we generally do uh, give the feed this garden. You know, we we use um, uh, calcified seaweed, mm. uh, manure, and compost, and some bone meal, and fish. Uh, also, fish and um, fish and blood. Yes, a certain yes. amount. If you're, you're not you specifically stick... for the tulips, no. but generally for all no. the plants. You're, 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 you stick quite keenly to organic. Yes, we do. Yes, mm. yes, we are entirely organic. Mm. Yeah. 